What's up, YouTube family? Welcome back to another interview. I am really excited today because we are joined by Derek Lau from the Guild of Guardians team. And Guild of Guardians is a really exciting upcoming mobile role-playing game on the blockchain. And this one looks really high quality, triple A. Um, so I am, I'm really looking forward to learn about this one and you guys uh, should be looking forward to this conversation as well. So Derek, thank you so much for joining me on this channel. Uh, thank you for your willingness to come and, and just answer some questions uh, so that we can learn more about this project. Yeah, thanks a lot for having me here. Yeah, excited to have a chat. All right, cool. So uh, let's just like start off uh, at the very beginning. Like what was the vision behind this project, uh, why was it launched? What's, what was your role in this, like your background? Let's, yeah, let's just start mm -hmm. there. Why yeah. launch Guild of Guardians? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Guild of Guardians is owned and published by Immutable, mm -hmm. uh, which, is, which is a VC-funded blockchain startup. And Immutable's goal is to make digital worlds real. And so our, our, our vision is we want to create, we want to make sure that everyone who uh, interacts with digital assets, actually owns them. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the reasons why we started Guild of Guardians. And so Guild of Guardians is a mobile RPG. And our goal here is to really create a really fun and compelling game that can be played by millions of gamers all around the world. And they're able to turn their passion for gaming into assets. Mm -hmm. um, so we've been working on this for the past two years, well, past one year or so. Um, and Kind of, I've, I've been there kind of since the beginning, mm -hmm. and over the past year, we've grown out the team, uh, been developing the game, been growing out the community, and the game is going to be set to launch next year on mobile. Okay, so that's that's really cool. I mean, the the actual real player ownership aspect that is what gets me super excited about play to earn uh, NFT games on the blockchain, verifiable, like. What just go into that a little bit more? How does that how does that really set Guild of Guardians apart from the traditional games that that we've been playing for the last decade? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, as we all know, gaming is a massive industry, mm -hmm. and today what happens is that uh, people rent entertainment, mm -hmm. and so there's over a hundred billion dollars each year spent by players on renting entertainment. And what I mean by that is they're buying you know, digital things in a game, but they don't actually own them. They can't actually trade them. And so they're really just kind of renting skins. They're buying these things that are not in their control. Yeah. Um, and there's also no kind of provable scarcity around them. There's also no way for these gamers to build businesses around the game because all of it is so centralized and controlled by the mm -hmm. studios and they whose yeah. goal is to, you know, sell as much stuff as possible. Mm -hmm. And, and so, you know, with the advent of N NFTs, what that means is that games can now uh, create games with actual digital assets, which people can trade and own and integrate into the game in really interesting and unique ways. Um, and I think for Guild of Guardians, that's one of the things that we aim to do. So we aim to have a core game that is very fun, engaging, very social, but we also aim to integrate NFTs into the game in a way that makes the game a hundred times better to, than, than what it could otherwise be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. Okay, so tell me a little bit about your background specifically um, and, and like why we should believe in the team behind Guild of Guardians. Like why is the Guild of Guardians team the team to really bring blockchain gaming to the mainstream with a AAA quality RPG? Absolutely, so team is very important. Uh, so my background's a bit unique. So I started off doing a startup, um, like a parking startup, which ended up failing. Mm -hmm. I moved into management consulting so basically was advising different C-suite executives for how to run their businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, after, and then in 2017, I got into, that was when I got into NFTs. So I got in when CryptoKitties first came out. I'm actually kind of, what, I think, ranked number three or something in terms of all-time number of breeds. Okay. Um, so I got super deep into that and super deep wow, that's, into the that's crazy. NFT I space. interrupt you for a second because the Axie Infinity team literally got into NFTs with CryptoKitties as well and started working on Axie Infinity because of that. All right, keep going. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of the NFT projects kind of came from the early crowd, which is uh, very interesting to see. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, kind of been super deep into the space since then, you know, and I thought NFTs were the future. I decided to join Immutable around two years ago. Mm -hmm. And I joined here with the goal of figuring out how to add new games to the platform. Mm 
Mm -hmm. uh, what uh, kind of game to, would uh, make sense? Yeah. Alluvium is also going to be on Immutable X, right? Correct. So okay. Alluvium is also uh, on Immutable X. But the difference here is that I guess Guild of Guardians is owned and published by Immutable okay. as well. Okay. And then Alluvium are joining as a, as a partner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so you got in with CryptoKitties, you're really excited about this, and you're like, all right, we need to build something, uh, like, I'm ready, we're going to do something bigger than, than CryptoKitties. So how did you go, like, what, what were the steps taken? How did, how did Guild of Guardians start? So it started a long time ago, actually. So it started at the very beginning was, you know, before it was even Guild of Guardians, it was thinking about what kind of game made sense in the first place mm -hmm. for blockchain. Mm -hmm. Um, like why thinking about, you know, why do NFTs actually make sense and how can we make the most of them? Mm -hmm. Because we didn't want to just have a game where you would slap on NFTs and kind of call it a day. We wanted a game where the NFTs were made the game so much better. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so there was kind of this initial diligence and, and research phase and, and ideation phase of figuring out what exactly made sense. And who was this initial team? Like so the initial, there was a, there was a few people within Immutable okay. um, who were looking at this thinking about what kind of game made sense and also how we should do it as well. Mm -hmm. So whether or not we wanted to build the game ourselves, whether or not we wanted to partner with someone, which is what we ended up doing um, in order to get this thing off the ground. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. So who, who is on the team now? Um, like who's, who's, who's developing this, this game? Uh, what experience, like what I really, like what games maybe have they, have they made in the past that I would have heard about um, that should get me excited for their next, their next project? Yeah, absolutely. So at the highest level, Guild of Guardians is, is published and owned by Immutable, mm -hmm. and it's developed by Stepico Games, who are a mobile game studio. Okay. So on the Immutable side, um, we're also the team behind uh, Gods Unchained, okay. so one of the, the trading card games that mm -hmm. have been in, survived in the space for quite a long time. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've, played a, I've played a decent amount of Gods Unchained. Right, yeah, mm -hmm. excellent. And then, and then so kind of on the Immutable side, what we're really focused on is the high-level game direction, a marketing, kind of understanding how to actually use NFTs in the economy, um, getting NFTs in the game, that side of things. And then Sepigo Games, they've released multiple games in the past, you know, with 5 million plus downloads. Um, they've been around for 10 years building games and based mobile games in particular. Um, and so they're kind of focused on the core development. Mm -hmm. So actually building the game on mobile, kind of working with different artists to get to, to get make the game look as look and feel as good as possible. Um, so kind of that's what they're they're focused on, mm -hmm. and then so within the within that structure of the team, we currently have I think almost twenty five people full time okay. working on this project. A mm -hmm. um, lot of them are kind of developers, and and we have probably have a few more art partners as well who who are not included in that. Um, and then so within this team, uh, kind of some of our core members have worked across different AAA studios, so they worked in like. EA, Ubisoft, mm -hmm. uh, various other studios as well. They've released um, games such as uh, kind of some in the, the Fast and Furious franchise. Um, they've released stuff around like uh, the Risk Strategy game. They've worked on Sims. They've worked on, and they've also worked across a lot of different indie titles as well. Mm -hmm. um, so they're kind of familiar with what it takes to to get a to get a game off the ground. Mm -hmm. um, and then we all also have, you know, pretty strong experience on the NFT blockchain side, you know, some very experienced Solidity developers who mm -hmm. know how to make things work and stable and so on. Um, so we have, we have a pretty strong team with people with experiences in the different areas uh, in order to make this thing work. Okay, cool. Yeah. So yeah, that, that, that clears up a lot of that background now. So, so this is a, a really, it seems like a powerful partnership uh, between a mobile game studio and Immutable X. So you have the, the mobile game development expertise joined with the blockchain expertise. So definitely a little later on, I'm looking forward to getting into how you guys have decided to really start integrating the blockchain into Guild of Guardians. But before we get into that, let's just, let's just talk about the gameplay itself a little bit. So like at its core, what, what, how would you describe the gameplay of Guild of Guardians? How is it going to feel as a player to jump into this world? And, and what is the gameplay experience going to look like? Yeah, so Guild of Guardians is a fantasy squad-based RPG. Okay. So it's it's set in a familiar fantasy setting. So people can play, you can play as people from different factions, like humans, elves, orcs, etc. Mm -hmm. And then Kind of the premise of the game is that you have a, a team of heroes that you send into dungeons. 
And the goal of the game is to kind of progress through these different dungeons that get harder and harder to build your dream team and to kind of get loot and level up. So are these, um, are these like uh, teams that you put together, are you going to be controlling them individually or is it kind of like uh, you're, you're just like moving your, your team throughout? Like how, how is the gameplay when you're going yeah. to a dungeon going to feel like? Yeah, so the game is isometric, so top down, a bit like Diablo, for example. Mm -hmm. And you'll send in a team of four heroes to a dungeon at a time. And so this is where like the synergies between the different heroes play into an effect. Mm -hmm. You then control one of these heroes at a time. They can switch between the different ones to kind of use the abilities, run around. Each of the heroes will have their own unique abilities, synergies. You can you can roll and dodge with these heroes. So it's kind of like an action RPG mm -hmm. gameplay style. And how many total heroes will there be? So people will send in four at a time into these dungeons. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but in, in total, there'll be, like at the beginning, there'll be a roster of around 70 heroes. Okay. So um, then you'll be controlling one. And then when you're controlling one, the other ones are like controlled by AI or they're just like... Okay. Correct. Yes. Yeah. They're controlled by AI. And so within the game, the idea is there's a lot of um, strategic depth within in terms of how, how you build out your team, where you choose to focus your energy, mm -hmm. kind of the, the, the synergies that you put, plan to put in, as well as kind of a high skill ceiling, if that's what you into as well, where it's based around the timing and, the, and how you use your abilities and, mm -hmm. and, and fight the different enemies, which have their own different abilities as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I think um, uh, I was watching the gameplay trailer and definitely while you're explaining some of this, we'll, we'll maybe pop up <laughs> a little bit of a, a little gameplay. But it looks like it's, it's going to have like kind of League of Legends-esque, like ability dodging, uh, aiming, that kind of thing when you're controlling the champion. Is that is that right? Exactly. So each of them can run around like, you know, left, right, um, up, down, and you, you can, each of them will have their own abilities as well that, mm -hmm. that are different and, and that um, you can cast. And so, yes, there's there's definitely like a, an action element of it as, as well as throughout these dungeons. Okay. And then this is going to be mobile only, right? Correct. Our focus is on mobile only. We want to make it really good for mobile. Okay, cool. Cool. So that sounds really interesting. So uh, is the so the dungeon gameplay is is like the core adventure mechanic where you're going and fighting. Um, is is there anything else built on top or planned on top of that? Yeah. So the this the core combat is kind of how it'll work throughout. But we have uh, as you do in many of these other games, you have kind of lots of different modes. And mm -hmm. so this kind of core um, dungeon campaign mode is one of them. We'll also plan to have other modes centered around guilds because guilds play a big part in in the game as the name would suggest mm -hmm. um, so for example going being able to go into the dungeon at the same time as other as your friends mm -hmm. and, and to be able to clear it that way being able to go into a raid with many other people at the same time as well mm -hmm. um, or uh, it would be things like you know challenge towers and other things like that where the, the game modes a bit different the objectives are a bit different um, but the kind of core combat or the way you would use your heroes would be similar mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so then the, the the game that releases next year, which is is there a specific release date on that on that yet, or it's just like sometime in twenty twenty two? No, no specific okay. no specific date. We're we're shooting for early twenty twenty two. And so what is gonna be for sure with that one is the core dungeon running, the core uh gameplay mechanics uh, around your team of four guardians successfully clearing dungeons. That's that's what's gonna launch at core. At the, at Correct. The very start. Correct. As well as kind of uh, our core guild mechanics as well around um, like play to earn and guild crafting and different okay. things like that. So what are what are the advantages of, of being in a guild then for for gameplay or for earning? So yeah. So um, one of our one of the, there's two there's a few pr principles here, right? So the first is that we believe that games are more fun with friends. Definitely. I and agree. So we want to. We want to encourage people to play together, mm -hmm. right, and help each other, create a good experience. And that's, so that's why we um, encourage players to kind of join a guild, and that's yeah. reflected in, in the game. Mm -hmm. um, and then so specifically in terms of guilds, what people can join, uh, anyone can join a, a guild, right, um, which while well, joining a guild, they're able to kind of participate in something called guild crafting. And so when you enter into a dungeon, uh, one of the rewards from clearing a dungeon is going to be these crafting materials. But as an individual, you actually can't uh, craft equipment yourself. So you can't craft these NFT items by yourself. You have to join a guild mm. and work together to craft these items. And so these kind of these NFT items are considered, you know, difficult, you know, more premium things in the game. Mm. Um, and people have to work together to actually get them. And so that's kind of one of the 
one of the core mechanics, there's, like I mentioned before, there'll also be specific game modes that are more tailored to guilds, so things like guild raids or um, guild battles. Those are kinds of you want to join a guild to participate in and in order to get those rewards as well. So we want to encourage people to play together. Mm -hmm. um, and also, ultimately, like, uh, create a real economy as well. We don't want... We don't want people just playing by themselves. We want people playing with other people, mm -hmm. with others. Okay. Um, so I have a question about this, this guild crafting. I, I think it's a really cool concept um, that you have to be a part of something bigger than yourself in order to actually mint some of these NFTs. But if if you gather the resources um, to, to, to actually craft something, but you obviously can't craft it unless you're part of a guild, if you join a guild and craft it, like does that NFT belong to you or does it belong to the guild? Great question. So what will happen is that when an NFT gets crafted through a guild crafting, mm -hmm. it gets sent to the market for sale. Mm -hmm. And then when it's sold, uh, it gets the value gets distributed proportionally based on how much you contributed. So okay. if you were a really big contributor, you would get a you know, high share of the sale. If you were less, you would get less. Okay. Cool. And then I'm guessing, will there be like guild leaderboards uh, where you can see like the top producing guilds and, and stuff like that? Yeah, there'll be guild leaderboards and there'll also be a guild prizes as well. So the opportunity for different guilds to compete okay. on, on different aspects of the game and also earn NFTs or, or other rewards. Hmm. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. So that, that this perfectly transitions into the third, third part of this interview now, which is going to be about the play to earn mechanics, uh, the tokenomics and how economic incentives are aligned between uh, both players and, and the, de the developers. Um, so at its very core, how how is earning going to work? So we talked about this NFT crafting, which will obviously be one aspect. Um, but what are the core earning mechanics that are going to be built into Guild of Guardians? Sure. So uh, there's, there's a few things here. So the first is crafting, which we've talked about. Mm -hmm. um, and so players can play the game starting for free, and they'll be able to play with just, you know, common, what we call common common heroes and common equipment, which is non-tradable, and they'll be able to contribute to the guild and earn by guild crafting. And so that's one. The second one is, is through merging. And so in the game, again, when you play the game, you can um, earn these summoning shards. And what you can do with summoning shards is you can summon heroes, uh, which you can then merge into kind of NFT heroes. Uh, and so you'll be able to merge these heroes that can be um, sold and, and earned that way. And the interesting thing about both of these is that the NFTs that are crafted and the and the heroes that can be merged aren't actually sold by us. And so the only way to actually create them in the economy is for, for players to play the game to make them. So there's kind of a, like a whole set of heroes that you can only get by playing the game. And there's also a set of or, or the items, really, which you can only get by by playing. Um, so those are yeah. those are kind of two, cool. two, main, two ways. The third is uh, kind of leaderboard prizes. And so, like I mentioned, we want to incentivize people to compete, to, to achieve, make certain achievements in the game, work together. And so there'll be these guild leaderboard prizes um, as well for the top guilds. And we'll probably also have prizes for um, guilds to compete based on their own tier. So you don't, you don't have smaller guilds competing against really big guilds mm -hmm. for the same prizes. Mm -hmm. um, so that's number three. And the number four is around the token. And so the Guild of Guidance economy will be tied to a ERC20 token. Mm -hmm. And so players will be able to get this token by playing the game. And so the, what the current plan is we've we've allocated something like, um, that be like 65% or so of the tokens mm -hmm. that go to the community and go to players. And so over time, people will be able to earn these tokens for, for playing the game. Okay, cool. Yeah, let's, let, let's dive a little bit more into the ERC20 token. Um, what is the purpose behind this token? Is it just a utility token? Is there governance behind it as well? Uh, what was the creative design behind behind it? They're gems, right? Is that what they're called? Yeah, yeah, they're gems, yeah. So the idea is that the, they are the in-game currency uh, within Guild of Guardians. Mm -hmm. And so they, they provide both utility and governance purposes. Okay. Um, so the, there's a fixed supply of, of these gems which get distributed over time. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly to the players and community members. And the the reason you'll use these gems is there's a, there's a few ways you can use it. So the first is that whenever someone wants to mint a new NFT, mm -hmm. they actually need to pay a certain number of gems. Okay. And so this is done to... And this is items you know, and heroes, I'm guessing? Correct, okay. correct. And so this is done to help regulate the economy 
and to also give a utility to to gems. So the more people who are playing, the more gems that are going to be needed, um, which which is um, going to be good. And then so the second thing Sorry. is around. So uh, when the, when you're when you're burning gems, are, are you burning gems, or are they going back to the Guild of Guardians team? Like, what happens to the gems when you're spending them to to mint these NFTs? Good question. So the the gems will be will, will be sent to a rewards pool, okay. and so they actually get uh, sent back to to gem holders um, as as a, as a reward. Okay, like as yield yeah. for like staking gems. Is yeah, this, okay. for actively for actively staking. We can talk more about that. Um, Okay. Second okay. Well, yeah. Sorry. So so keep going. Yeah. So yeah. 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 No problem. No problem. And then so so the the second part of gems is around. Um, so first is minting. Mm -hmm. uh, the second is people can also use the gems to vote as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so there'll be certain decisions, particularly around the gems and how the gems are used, which will be governed by the community. Okay. Um, and so we're we're kind of still finalizing the exact details of how this will work, but the idea is that there'll be governance to, to the gems as well. Uh, the third thing is, is that the gems need to be used for primary and secondary sales. And so what I mean by that is that when the developer, so which is us, mm -hmm. uh, sells an NFT, 20% of the cost of that NFT has to be paid for in gems. Okay. So does that ink? So, so that only includes NFTs sold from the developer, not anything traded on a secondary marketplace. Like, for example, if I took my Guild of Guardians NFT, went to OpenSea, uh, and sold it to someone in Ethereum, uh, that that would obviously still still work, right? Correct, correct. It's it's for primary sales. Okay. okay. Um, and then again, those gems which are spent in that way go into a rewards pool. Okay. Cool. So I, I'm, I'm really liking this ecosystem. It's starting to form in my mind kind of, yeah. kind of how it's going to work and how each time that it's that you're spending it, there's a percentage going straight back to the player base for people that are, that are holding gems. Okay. Um, and so one of the main ways that players are earning these gems is simply through playing the game, correct? Like initially you're earning the gems just by playing Guild of Guardians. And will even free guardians be able to earn gems or do you need the NFT guardians? Like how how exactly does that work? Like free to play uh free to play players can earn, right? Or or no. Yeah, correct. So the idea is that we want everyone to be able to earn gems by playing the game. Mm -hmm. Uh, we haven't figured out the exact distribution. So, like, if we have you know a thousand gems, how do we distribute that mm -hmm. to different players based on different behaviors? We haven't nailed that down yet. Um, but the idea is we want to incentivize behaviors in the game. We want to support you know people who play the game, who help grow the game, etc. And so there'll be a, a, a bunch of um, these gems that go to players, and also be a bunch of gems allocated to broader community members as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then is the gem distribution the same even no matter how many players there are like so for example say is there like a set pool for all distributions that go out for player rewards so if there's only 10 players like maybe there's a lot more gems to go around but once there's <laughs> like 5 million players does that mean that every single player is earning less for the time that they're spending or or how is how is that going to scale? So the yeah, that's a really good question. We plan to have fixed. Um, there'll be that there there will there will likely be fixed gem rewards, mm -hmm. and so there'll be, for example, ten thousand gems a day, as okay. an example, right? Okay. Um, and so as the player base changes, the number of gems per player will change. Um, but what we expect to happen is that as the player base grows, mm -hmm. uh, there'll be more demand for gems, and so. Uh, potentially, the value of these gems will also change. Um, okay. you know, not financial advice, but mm -hmm. <laughs> so we yeah. expect it to be um, kind of roughly proportional. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. So even though there's more players for gems to go around uh, to to be spread between, which makes the distribution a little bit thinner, the additional demand for gems also uh, in a supply demand curve means the price will probably be a little bit higher as well. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. So then, is there anything here that we that we've missed on on the play to earn mechanics, tokenomics, or or economic incentives side? I think the only other thing here is that uh, 
the the current plan is that a, a percentage of the secondary trading fees mm-hmm. that the developer um, will charge will also be paid for in gems. So in your example, um, let's say that Guild of Guardians charges a, a 2% fee, for example, mm-hmm. on trading in the secondary market, then a percentage of that would also be paid for in gems. And so the plan is that this will... We, we want to make this, you know, an easy experience. And so likely this will be done on the back end without, without players having to, to manage different, okay. um, different tokens. Uh, was, was there any kind of gym presale or it, it, like, are there gyms available right now? Or is, is what, how is that looking or will there ever, uh, ever be? I'm not sure what I can say on that at the moment. <laughs> uh, okay. That's, that's fair enough. <laughs> yes. Okay. That's fine. Uh, let's uh, move to the, the last <laughs> section then. Um, so what NFTs actually, to catch everyone up, what's already been sold so far for Guild of Guardians? Uh, what's already out there? Um, and as like percentage-wise, like what's what's been sold that is planning to be sold before uh, the game releases? Like is, is half the NFTs already sold or, or how are we looking? So, so far we've sold... Uh, around four point six million dollars of NFTs, mm-hmm. and so we've so far gone for sale. We've so far sold the legendary heroes mm-hmm. and all of the guilds, and so they're all sold out now. Mm-hmm. So what's left to sell are the epic and rare heroes, okay. and then the pets and energy boosters. Okay. Um, so so far, I would say we've 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 sold less than half mm-hmm. of what we what we um, expect to sell in total, and the next sales will kind of come in the next month or or so. Okay. Uh, so explain explain the the heroes that have already been sold and the difference between like those legendary ones and the Hello? rare and. Sorry, you just cut out for a second. Oh, oh. Um, explain the difference. <laughs> uh, so the 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 legendary heroes that were just sold, like h- how are they set apart? Like what makes them what makes them powerful compared to like the the epic ones or the the rare the other ones that are that are still not sold yet or will be sold yeah. in the future. Yeah, sure. So the way these heroes are designed are they're kind of like Overwatch or, or League of Legends characters, right? Each of them are very unique. Um, they have their own you know, place in the team. They have their own um, strengths and weaknesses. And so generally speaking, the legendaries are stronger than the epics, which are stronger than the rares, generally speaking. Okay, but they're, um, they're completely but, different champions, though, with, with correct. completely unique abilities. It's exactly. not just like a and, stronger version of the same one. No, 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 okay. exactly. And so that's... That this is done to kind of keep it interesting, so you, you could have you know rare heroes which are, which do better than legendary heroes in certain situations, mm-hmm. um, and and that's definitely kind of the intent, so that there's there's an interesting balance there. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Yeah, and then there'll also generally be less legendary heroes available, so they'll also be scarcer compared to epics, compared to rest. Mm-hmm. Okay, talk about those the the boosts that you said were sold are are going to be sold in the future. What are those going to be for? Sure. So traditionally in these mobile RPG games, um, apps will usually sell you, give the players the opportunity to buy extra energy in the app store mm. right, to be able to play more. Yeah. Um, instead, what we're doing is we're trying to apply NFTs in a unique way. And what we're doing is we're selling these energy boosters, which are NFTs that give you kind of a, a permanent boost as long as you, you hold them, mm-hmm. uh, which, which give players extra energy each, each day to be able to spend. Okay. And so the idea is that instead of, buying this in a purchase well you can just buy this nft and own it mm-hmm. um, and get this benefit yeah and, and then if, if you want you can trade it away as well yeah exactly if so it's just connected to your account and when you own that nft connected to your account you just have more energy that you can use daily and because it's an nft if you ever get to a point where your life situation changes you're not playing as much uh you can turn that into value and someone else is going to be wanting that so there's going to be a limited number of these energy boosters total Correct. Yeah, a limited number of these uh, kind of founder energy boosters. Okay. Uh, we may introduce, in general, we will probably introduce more NFTs in the future once the game gets big, mm-hmm. because we don't want the limited supply to negatively affect the game overall, mm-hmm. which wouldn't be good for anyone. Yeah, yeah. You don't want there to be less overall players because new players coming in are like, "There's nothing here for me." Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that 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 is something that that does worry me a little bit about some of some of these early NFT games, even some that I'm I'm invested in a ton, like uh, Mirandis uh, from Gala mm-hmm. Games. Is like they have a a total like a limited total number of land deeds, and 
like a lot of stuff is already sold out. So I'm just really hoping that there like people are still going to have the desire to want to spend time in the world when there's there's not a a, a homestead to buy off the marketplace. Um, yeah. 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 It's it's one of the tricky challenges that kind of different games have to to get right. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to be learning a lot from this first kind of generation of these NFT games. Um, and I, I, I'm looking forward to this first generation because there's going to be some sick games um, that are really fun and the play to earn side is, is going to be epic. But I'm also like super excited for like Gen 2 of these games after everyone is able to learn from the mistakes. Um, but also like a yeah. lot of these projects, I'm guessing are going to get supported a lot more than some traditional games, like mo maybe like more League of Legends style uh, support uh, long term because like the the way that the economics are set up there's like a lot of reoccurring revenue when nfts are traded because you guys are getting uh, uh, like you're taxing all nfts that are like maybe like what percentage do you take anytime they're traded uh we haven't announced that yet okay but there will be yeah, some, yeah. some but there will be some yeah yeah, yeah. there will be some exactly yeah. and and as as long as there's a there's a player population there and there's like it makes sense that these teams, it's not just going to be Gen 2 of games that fixes these problems, but these current games too, like people are, they're going to learn there's going to be iterations and changes. Yeah. And I think there's, there's going to be some really powerful players that, that are around sticking around long term, um, which is why I've been investing in NFTs in these, in these first projects. Okay. So, yeah. um, you said that these next NFT sales are going to be coming in the next few months. I'm guessing there's no there's no dates announced or, or anything like that. Yeah. We don't we don't we don't like to give dates. Okay, <laughs> that's that's fair enough. Um, yeah, dates dates are always are always <laughs> difficult because it's yeah. like you miss it by a little bit, and the the community gets on you really really yeah exactly negatively. Yeah. Okay. So you said that you sold. Uh, millions of dollars of NFTs so far. What does the funding look like for the overall Guild of Guardians project? I mean, because Immutable is a part of this as well. I'm guessing Immutable has has a decent number of funding. Uh, there's a lot of projects that are going to be using Immutable. Um, yeah, what is what does the funding look like? How much runway exists for Guild of Guardians right now? Yeah, um, I'm not sure how much I can say here, but <laughs> what I will because I think there's some stuff that's not announced. But what I will say is that. Uh, we are very well funded to kind of live through, you know, multiple years of a, of a bear market if needed um, to keep building with where 100 percent committed to, to releasing this game, even if we don't sell any more NFTs. Like we don't need to sell more NFTs to to, to, to launch the game. Okay. Um, so funding is kind of luckily for us. And, and I think many other games in this space is, is like kind of low on our list in terms of like what, what we're concerned yeah. about. Yeah. yeah. So are there going to be uh, so you, you have that one referral program? Are there are there any like creator programs you guys are going to be launching that you guys are working on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think like part of the part of the goal is that you know within the the gem community rewards, we we want to figure out the right way to also incentivize these community creators, developers, or these other people who who add value um, to the overall universe without necessarily playing or. Mm -hmm. or Right. Um, well, and so I, I am planning on playing as well, <laughs> but yeah, while doing both, yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, uh, yeah, we should work together to figure out a good good system there. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. Well, man, this is this is really kind of cleared up all the fog of war that existed uh, for Guild of Guardians in my mind. I'm I'm seeing this vision. I'm excited about it. Um, before we before we end out, uh, let's let's just talk about like. In the end, why was the the final concepts that you guys landed on for Guild of Guardians like? Why why is this the game that you felt like the blockchain needed? Yeah. So ultimately, the you know games are it's a competitive industry. People choose where to spend their time. Like it's it's one of many options for entertainment ultimately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the way we wanted to stand out as a game is the through how we use nfts in the game like that's kind of the core competitive advantage when we're, we're not necessarily here to build a game with you know super unique and killer graphics right like that's not really our specialty mm -hmm. um, we're not here to innovate in gameplay and create this whole new genre of game that's completely new mm -hmm. um, that's not necessarily where we, you know we don't want the game to fail because of that innovation what we want to innovate is really in how we use nfts mm -hmm. and so the reason we chose a mobile rpg Mm -hmm. as a genre is because we thought it had a really good fit for, for 
for NFTs. Mm -hmm. So fundamentally, we think that NFTs can be used to improve the game. You know, players like in this game, players like strategy, they like depth. And so that's what NFTs brings a lot of, right? There's a whole new layer of strategy when you think about all the different things and, and different participants in, in the economy. Mm -hmm. um, it's a genre where collecting heroes is very natural. People like to collect these heroes already, like doing roles for, for heroes. Yeah. Um, only now you get the added benefit, added benefit of actually owning them or, or being able to have provable scarcity to them. Yeah. Um, and so we thought it's a nat very natural fit. The whole RPG economy is also a very natural fit. You look at games like you know RuneScape and Diablo and Eve. Mm -hmm. People can, people get it, and and people yeah. there's a proven demand for it, right? Um, and then in terms of mobile, we thought mobile would be a really good fit as well because it's biggest category of, mm -hmm. of, of gaming. Yeah, it's it's twice as big as you know PC and console. It's going five times as quickly or something like that. Yeah. Um, and it, it's super accessible as well. And so it's it's kind of a really powerful avenue for onboarding all these people into mm. uh, crypto and NFTs. Yeah. And especially for a play to earn game, the, the power of mobile in third world countries, Axie has been proving that, where just mm. like what what those of us in in like the United States, for example, think of as like, it's, it's a minuscule amount of earning. It's a life-changing amount of money for, for a lot of people in third world countries where the economic earning potential is just not there in their local economies. Um, and I that is that is very true that the mobile gaming and just e any amount of, of play to earn mechanics is gonna bring on such a huge number of people from all around, all around the globe. Um, and- Exactly. And yeah, I think I think that's that's exciting. Yeah, I think what's really exciting is the idea of we're like, building a real economy here, right? Like it's mm. there's going to be all these different participants. There's going to be people who are playing to to try to earn, playing full time as a living. There's going to be people who are you know buying different assets. There's going to be people who are managing guilds yeah. or people who are creating content or um, creating all these are uh, developing you know other analytics applications. And so yeah. this idea where you can you can even within the game you can specialize in your play style of how you want to play. You know what kind of heroes you want to build out, and that has an impact on the economy. Because so of all these different elements, which we're, which we're trying to create to, to build this really vibrant, you know, economy with around the game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm guessing you're not going to have an answer to this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway because <laughs> I know that the audience is probably curious about it. Like, what do you what do you imagine an an average player is going to be able to earn playing Guild of Guardians on a daily basis? Um, I know Axie's earnings right now are, are extremely yeah. high, uh, but the economy also needs needs more depth in order to continue long term. Um, so the sustainability is yet to be proven. Um, but is there like a a goal that you guys are shooting for in in the earning power, or is it just like we just have to wait and see uh, how how it's all going to play out? Yeah, I think that's not necessarily something in common on too much at the moment, just because there are so many variables yeah. that affect that. Mm -hmm. um, it's really hard. It's really, really hard to to tell them that until it's live. I think generally speaking, our you know sustainability is, is one of our goals. And so we expect that at the beginning, um, kind of for the for the early adopters and when there's nothing at all in the economy, mm -hmm. that the the rate of earning will be higher. Like when there's no item at all, mm -hmm. right? That yeah. first ever item is going yeah. to be, you know, super cool and prestigious. And so at the beginning, we expect it um, to, to be higher, but we are definitely building for sustainability. Like we want the game to be here for five, 10 years time. Yeah. Okay. I, I know these questions keep on, but I, every time you say <laughs> something, I, I think of something else. So, so as far as the long-term sustainability goes of, of the user created NFTs and heroes um, that are, that are not going to be sold by you guys. Is there any kind of burning mechanic for those? Like, are items going to break after a while, or are these NFTs permanent for forever once they're minted? Yeah, so we're looking at a few different um, so, like sinks, effectively, for these NFTs. Mm -hmm. So merging is one example already where it's a sink. So, for example, the way it works is you have uh, five to seven heroes, mm -hmm. which can be NFTs, and you can merge them into one random hero of a high rarity. Okay, and so. That's a way which 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 there's a sync already in the game, and we plan to have some for, um, other ones as well. Mm -hmm. And then the the other way we plan to manage sustainability as well is around the the gem crafting cost, so to speak. So yeah. we talked about before how in order to mint these in NFTs, there would be a kind of a, a small amount of gems required. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And so one of the ideas we're looking at is that this cost would actually, the gem cost would actually increase as more items get minted. Mm-hmm. So for example, um, the 10,000th sword will cost more than the first one and maybe the 100,000th one will cost mm-hmm. more than the 10,000th mm-hmm. one. Just so over time, there'll be a natural limit that gets met in the market yeah. um, through kind of supply and demand and to people start, you know, distributing and, and minting other stuff and not just this one, mm-hmm. one sword, for example. Wow. Yeah, this is this is super cool. This is super cool. I'm I'm excited for Guild of Guardians. Uh, I'm more excited now, but after this interview is over, uh, than I was before. And and already, uh, Guild of Guardians has been in 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 the top five that I've been looking out for of of upcoming projects. Um, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so this this is really cool. I think you guys have a massive player base just waiting for you, especially because you're on mobile. And I cannot wait to see how this just continues to play out. It's really, really, really exciting. Um, yeah. I, I know the explosion of Axie has been getting all these other projects re- really hyped up as well. Like, what, what is the potential truly for play to earn gaming? Because, like, in my mind, the bit like, so there's, so gaming's already massive, right? There's already billions of gamers worldwide. But the mm. biggest barrier on an individual level to gaming is that after you spend hours playing, like, yes, you progress in this world, but it's, it's hard to find the meaning outside of the game. And like, I was some, I've, I've, I played like, I don't know, I've played League for like 12 years or something. I, <laughs> I even was on like a semi-pro team for a little bit. I was like trying to become pro. Uh, I, was, I was salaried for a little bit. We didn't qualify for the LCS though. And then it all kind of fell apart. That's cool. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah. But <laughs> like I, I have had this lifelong kind of pursuit of turning my passions into into earning into earning mechanics. And so when I was fourteen, I started making Call of Duty videos uh, because I wanted to to do something productive when I was playing Call of Duty. And yeah, the, the play to earn gaming bring like breaks that barrier of not providing value to your real life, and is just gonna make playing games for hours and hours, not only fun, but now meaningful on top of that, which is like, it, it, it's gonna double yeah. or triple the total number of gamers in the world, in my opinion. Yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna completely disrupt the industry. And I think you said a really good point there, which is kind of one of the things we're aiming for, which is we want the game to be, you know, play and earn. So it's something that you, it's a game that you play anyway. It's a fun game, Yeah, right? Um, totally. But on, top, but on top of that, you get this bonus where you're able to, you know, not spend, thousands of hours in league and not get anything for it, but you're able to get something for your time and, and potentially earn as well. Yeah. Um, so I think once you, know, you get this combination right, you just have a, a killer game that everyone mm-hmm. um, everyone talks yeah. about, everyone everyone tries out, mm-hmm. um, yeah. and that's yeah. when it'll be big. Totally, totally. On, on just the playing to earn side, all that's unlocked. But then on the other side too, when there's people who actually want to put in money, like I, I'm not proud to admit it, but I've spent <laughs> thousands of dollars on League of Legends skins. I think I have a skin for every champion in the game, and it's like com- it's like completely valueless to me when I'm not playing League of Legends. Like I took a two year break, and it's like I've poured so much money into that game, and if each one of the skins was an NFT and could be resold, like how much value could be unlocked? Some of those really rare skins that I have, like how how much more value yeah. could I possibly have in my League of Legends account than I even initially put into it? So like it turns just like spending for cosmetics and and games, which gamers want to do anyway, because we want to look cool in the metaverses that we're uh, spending our time in, but it turns that into an investment as well. So like it turns your time into an investment and it turns what you spend in games into an investment. And yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's so exciting. It's super exciting. Yeah. Yeah. I think the next, the next five years that we're going to see crazy things. Um, and it's going to be really normal. Like that's the thing. It's going to yeah. eventually just become normal. Mm-hmm. Um, people won't even realize that you could not own stuff in a game, you know, yeah. like, um, yeah. and, and that, that's the, the crazy shift. Yeah. No, my, my channel is called on chain gaming. And like, <laughs> like literally right after I created and started posting videos, I realized, wait, my channel name is going to become obsolete because <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not, it, like right now people are searching for on chain gaming yeah. or, or for like blockchain gaming and stuff like that. But once, all, once it takes over and everything's on the blockchain, it's going to be consumer face. People aren't even going to really know, except for those who like really want to take their item outside onto a different marketplace or something. But like, right, for yeah. most people, they're not like on chain gaming. What do you mean? It's just normal <laughs> games. It's just a game. Yeah, what are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, uh, that's fun. Well, thank you, thank you so much for for joining me for this interview and, and talking and explaining to to the audience uh, what Guild of Guardians is. Uh, do you have any like final closing thoughts that you wanna that you wanna share before we close out here? I'll just encourage anyone who's interested to learn more to just check out our website. Mm. So www.guildofguardians.com, and definitely join our Discord group. So we have I think almost fifty thousand members in our Discord group awesome. now, and so pretty active community and. Um, everyone will be very willing to help answer any questions you might have. Cool, cool. And yeah, I'll have uh, both of those linked in the description as as well. Um, and then also Guild of Guardians does have a cool referral system, um, but right now there's no NFTs for sale, but I will definitely have that referral link <laughs> below too. So when there's a drop in the future, um, I'll, I'll probably make another video about it covering it. Uh, but if you guys remember and you want to use my referral link to support the channel uh, when you're buying your NFTs, that would be incredible um, because, yeah, we're trying to make the best blockchain gaming content for you. Um, and I'm not sure if you know this, but uh, my brother's editing uh, for, for these videos and then our friend is doing original music production and sound engine like sound engineering. Um, so we have like original intros and outros. So we're having so much fun with this channel. So yeah, definitely use our referral link and, and support our content creation if you'd like. Um, yeah. You also get 5% off for using the link as oh, well. Oh, cool. Yeah. So yeah, if you use so the link, 5% use... off too. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? It's 5% referral kickback and 5% off. So correct, correct. yeah, it's you're, you're generating 10% free value for the <laughs> ecosystem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We love it. That's cool. <laughs> That's really cool. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a big thumbs up. If you're not subscribed yet, what are you doing? Make sure you hit subscribe and click that notification bell, and you will not miss any future on-chain gaming videos. There'll definitely be more interviews. Um, you are welcome anytime, by the way, Derek. Uh, if, there's, if there's something else that you want to reveal or, or share, um, just hit me up, and I would love to have you back on on-chain gaming. Will do. Will do. Got a few things in the pipes. <laughs> cool. Cool, looking forward to it. All right, guys, until next time, have fun roaming the metaverse.